guys. We're all nights. I'm Ray. I'm Alex. I'm Julian. And we are here checking out a video on YouTube called The Fall of World War II. Now, from what I understand, this, this is a little, like a, it's a little uh, informational video on the amount of people who passed away, who, who, who gave their lives up during the war. Not just Americans, but like what the, the UK have lost, France has lost, the Russians have lost, what Germany lost. So I figured we'd take a look at this. That way we can get the scope of how this really affected the world. Right. In terms of the, the the men and women who gave their lives in one way or the other, and even the people who suffered during, you know, who, who were civilians, you know? Right. Uh, we've been watching Banner Brothers. We started watching The Pacific. Loving it. You know, and, and it, there's tons of movies and shows about World War II, but the scope of, in terms of numbers, of what that meant, what the, the, the what, what it's done to the population, we're going to check this out. Okay. okay. Let's get Sounds to it. Good. I thought you said the fall of World War Two, and it's the fall. Oh, the fall, the fall. Yeah, yeah. I was like, the average lifespan of an American is eighty years. It's much longer. Sixteen. An eighty-year-old today was ten when World War Two ended. Jeez. Four when yeah. it began. A soldier who saw battle would have to be in his late eighties, at least today. Generals, political leaders, the decision makers of the war. Few are still with us. And over the past few decades, we've seen authors and filmmakers rush to capture stories from survivors before this connection of memory is lost. This project is not about individual war stories, and it's not about survivors. We're going to tell There's a the lot of lines not going. Whose lives are cut short by the war and see how these numbers stack up to other wars in history, including trends in recent conflicts. Thank you. We'll be counting soldiers and civilians separately. Okay, that's good. Uh, I thought they were moving over together. represents 1,000 people who died. Uh, so one is 1,000 people? Civilians mm -hmm. were of all walks of life. Whereas military deaths were almost entirely men. The average age was about 23. Oh, wow. In most battles, for every 1,000 soldiers killed, there are more than 1,000 who were injured. The word casualty can be confusing because in military speak, it often includes both deaths and injuries mm -hmm. and anything else that takes a soldier out of service. Here, we're just counting the deaths. And we'll begin with American soldiers. At a thousand apiece. Over 400,000 died. Wow. Most of the deaths occurred in the European theater, fighting the Nazis. And about a quarter were in the Pacific, fighting the Japanese. When you put them on the timeline, you see that casualties were the heaviest at the end of the war. The war began on September 1st, 1939. But the US wasn't willing to join the fight until Pearl Harbor, two years in. The deaths increased drastically on D-Day when the yeah. Allies invaded Normandy. Makes sense. Okay. One of the most tragic moments of the war was on D-Day at Omaha Beach, where 2,500 Americans fell. So about the same number of U.S. soldiers died on this single beach landing as the entire 13 years of the recent war in Afghanistan. What? Dear Lord. That's a huge The bloodiest battle in the Pacific was Okinawa which lasted 82 days, during oh which 12,500 Americans died. About 5,000 of these deaths were at sea from kamikaze attacks. You know, now let's look at some other countries. Put perspective. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Germany started World War II when it invaded Poland. Poland ultimately lost 200,000 soldiers in the war. Most died after the invasion while the country was occupied by Germany and the Soviet Union. Mm. Germany, meanwhile, lost just 16,000 in the invasion of Poland. The Nazis went on to invade and conquer other countries, including Denmark, Belgium, the Netherlands, France, Greece, and Yugoslavia. France had France surrendered, really bad but after time. losing 92,000 soldiers in the Battle wow. of France, 
over 200,000 ultimately fell, which includes deaths in POW camps, French colonies, and other fighting. Yugoslavia suffered almost half a million military deaths. The initial invasion brought relatively few casualties on both sides. But the deaths mounted under Nazi occupation due to guerrilla fighting, civil conflict, and mass executions. The Nazi invasions were swift, with relatively few German losses. Even the Nazi commanders expressed surprise at their success. And then we have the United Kingdom and the United States, who were not invaded, but took the fight to the Nazis. Britain oh lost about the same number of soldiers as the US, which includes the British colonies. Germany lost about half a million soldiers fighting the US and Britain in what is known as the Western Front, which took place in France and Belgium. It's crazy. It's insane. But most Nazi soldiers died in the Eastern Front. Ooh. Germany's unsuccessful invasion of the Soviet Union. Oh my god. The numbers bro. are staggering. I'm not surprised because I... The most famous battle of the Eastern Front, and perhaps the turning point of the European War, Stalingrad. was Stalingrad. The German 6th Army successfully took Stalingrad, but then got surrounded by the Soviets and cut off from food and ammunition. That Half was so great. Nazis would ultimately die in Stalingrad. Half a million Nazis. Another 100,000 were taken prisoner, of which 6,000 would ever return. POW... I know in Stalingrad, um... When uh, when they relieved it fell, uh, Stalin sent out a, a widespread message, and this was the first one that went out to civilians. And he was basically saying that um, the state of uh, the Soviet Union has uh, is nearly fallen. They've almost come for us. And if you have anything, take the fight to them. Don't let don't let them like trample us. And we ha still have a fighting spirit. And mm. they would just send in. Fleets of civilians I, I, that were getting gunned I, I think there was a name down. for that. There was a name for that. For that. For that. Uh, that tactic. That 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 one last hurrah type of thing. Yeah, and it was just so. So so. What am I going to battle with? Like a like a comb and and, and a blanket? No, I, I think from whatever you pick up from the dead. Yeah. Oh, you just you you pick you pick it up. I and, believe yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. But, you got uh, a gun. Yeah, you're ready to go. Whatever. Yeah, you yeah. Because... it was it was just like mothers, sons, fathers just running at actual trained uh, Nazis or not Nazis. Uh, they're basically military. Non, non trained. Non trained. Just, just. Yep. Okay. And it was just fleets of them. That's why. Uh, Jesus. Uh, Germany uh, had to pull out was because they actually lost so much ammunition from people running at them. But the way, but it's also the weather too. The weather played a big role in that. That's you know, I, I know that's a big factor because I know I, I believe the the Russians had uh, Serbian troops that were trained at warfare at yeah. in, in the winter. Well, Germany was not, you know, not winter inclined or prepared for that. Mm -hmm. had a low survival rate throughout World War II, and it was particularly grim in the East. When you include these POWs, roughly the same number of Germans died in Stalingrad as all the Western Front fighting against France, the UK, and the US. Really? And though Stalingrad was a victory for the Soviets, they suffered almost twice as many losses as Germany. Mm hmm. The Soviet Union would eventually defeat the once unstoppable German army, killing 2.3 million Nazi soldiers. Dude, what? Winning the war yeah. came at a cost. Yo. Remember, the Soviet Union back then was a lot bigger. It wasn't just No, but even then, this is staggering. It is, it is. Uh, big or no big, I mean, this is... What? It's sobering to the soul. Okay, stop. Yeah. It's a little desensitizing though when you see like each 8. individual. 7 million. No, I'm not desensitized at all to this. This is crazy. Some studies have calculated as many as 14 million dead. Jesus. I mean, to complete like, the count of me, European military deaths, we need to add German deaths from other fronts, including the North and Africa, as well as deaths from other Axis powers allied with the Nazis, Hungary, Romania, and Italy. When you put these European military deaths on the timeline, Jesus. it looks like this. 
You can now interact with the chart to learn more. Pause the narration if you'd like more time. Wow. This is insane. I like that they have an interactive version. We might have to deal with that, deal with that later on. And, and now we switch to civilian yeah. deaths in Europe. Oh, the thing civilians, this is all military. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, if they, they have a separate one for Six Jew, million Jewish people were killed in the Holocaust. Hot. Oh, there it goes. If you separate this by country, you see that about half, 2.7 million, were Polish. 700,000 were Soviets, followed by Hungary and 17 other countries. Jesus. Broken down another way, about half of the 6 million were killed in the concentration camps. Over a million died in Auschwitz. Most were killed in the gas chambers. Others died from starvation, exhaustion, disease, and other forms of execution. The second most deadly camp was Treblinka, which was exclusively an extermination camp, set up to look like a train station. Hmm. Mobile killing groups killed 1.4 million Jews. Jesus Christ. Like with the gas chambers, men were killed first to reduce the risk of revolt. Jesus Christ. You know, um, uh, I'm sorry to pause it here in this picture, but no, you're good. I can't imagine, you know, you being a soldier, you being in that war, yeah, shoot this lady and shoot her baby. And you, like, you carry through and do that, you know, or. Uh, what about, what about if you, you're. You're a soldier. You have a wife. You have. Well, that's what I'm saying. You have a daughter. You, you have a son. This. You have a family, and you're doing this. And you're doing this. There's no way. There's no way. I can't imagine like being able to come to terms with myself doing this in any way or form. Like even if it, it's just, it's it's, it's demonizing. I, I can't. You can't wrap your head. There's no way to wrap no, your head. It, there's probably no way to recover. And if it bothered you, it probably you probably never recovered when you went back home. Of what you did, mm -hmm. crazy. It's worse too because they probably like had to do it, otherwise they'll be shot in the back. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So uh, when they when they got back, they probably had to live with that for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Was that thought that I don't look what I did, what it forced me to do? The Holocaust also includes non-Jewish deaths. Between 130,000 to 500,000 Roma, then called Gypsies, were killed. The numbers are disputed. About a quarter million people with disabilities were killed. Homosexuals, Catholics, and other groups were also exterminated, but their numbers were Catholics. relatively small. Some historians say that other civilian deaths should go under the label of Holocaust. About two million non-Jewish Poles were killed under German occupation, some of which were sent to the gas chambers at Auschwitz. When you combine civilian and military deaths, over 16% of the total Polish population died in World War II, which is the highest percentage of any country. 16%? But not That's the highest insane. in total death count. The Soviet Union again tops that list, losing at least as many civilians as it did soldiers, somewhere between 10 and 20 million. A particularly dark moment for the Soviet Union was the siege of Leningrad, now St. Petersburg. German forces surrounded Leningrad before civilians could be evacuated. Supplies, including food, were cut off for two and a half years. Two and a half years? One and a half million people died as a result, mostly from starvation, mostly civilians. Stalin's cruelty towards his own people is partly responsible for these numbers. Mm -hmm. He often didn't allow civilians to evacuate from cities, thinking it would cause the soldiers protecting them to fight harder. About a million Soviets died in Stalin's own labor camps, called the Gulag. Mm -hmm. The Gulag. Just about every country suffered civilian losses, especially countries who were invaded. While many died as a result of so-called collateral damage, the biggest numbers occurred when it was no accident. Civilians were exterminated, purposely fired upon or bombed, used as human shields, or intentionally deprived of food. The intentional killing of civilians was done by most warring parties, including the United Kingdom and the United States. The United Kingdom was spared of a land invasion, but still lost 60,000 civilians, largely from German air raids or blitzes, often directed at civilian population centers. The UK did the same to German cities at a much greater magnitude, causing about 10 times the number of deaths. But most German civilian deaths came from the ground at the late stage of the war. When the Nazi regime collapsed, 
civilians living in occupied regions had to desperately flee from the advancing Soviet army. Rapes were widespread, and death estimates ranged from 600,000 to 3 million. Yeah. Crazy. These numbers are like, like, like astronomical. I, 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 like, yeah, I can't, they're harrowing. I can't really. Total. 22 million people. We just bro. counted about 20 million civilian deaths in Europe. If you add this to the European military deaths we already covered, it brings us to over 40 million. Jesus Christ. Then we have the Asian theater. Here we see the vast majority of military deaths in Asia came from China and Japan. On the civilian side, about 6 million deaths from China, Indonesia, Korea, Indochina, and the Philippines can be attributed to Japanese war crimes, which are sometimes compared to the Nazi atrocities due to the sheer scale of the cruelty. China had the second highest death count after the Soviet Union. And like the Soviets, the Chinese government demonstrated a stunning willingness to sacrifice its own people. The Chinese nationalists opened the dike at the Yellow River, mm. hoping the flood would halt the Japanese advance. Half a million Chinese civilians or more were killed, which is two or three times the number who died in all countries in the 2004 Asian tsunamis. Golly. But the invasion of China only cost Japan 200,000 soldiers. Most were killed fighting the U.S. and allies in the Pacific War. A significant portion of Japanese civilian deaths were caused by American firebombing and the two nuclear attacks. Contrary to official U.S. statements, these airstrikes were directed at civilian populations. So about the firebomb, there used to be an experimental firebomb that they were going to do, and it was actually something that was, uh, it was like the rival to uh, the big boy and the atom bomb. Mm. What they were planning to do, we were planning to do, was attach um, to bats these uh like stuff like just fire uh fire starters a napalm they we yeah. were gonna attach napalms so that way they could naturally go into all these crevices in like the japanese buildings and whatnot because a lot of japanese buildings were predominantly uh wooden because mm -hmm. they had this own architectural techniques that they did where it barely used any nails or anything mm -hmm. it was mostly grooves and whatnot so the uh, i the idea was that when we dropped those bombs the bats would fly into all these crevices and whatnot and just start a huge fire in these cities. And we did that? Like, that happened? Or that was a, it was that a was plan. plan? It was a plan to happen. Oh, but that didn't happen. Like, they wouldn't, well, that didn't, wouldn't actually fly the bats in there. Was... Well, it, there were, I think there was a simulation and probably one instance of it happening. But then once uh, the Manhattan Project got completed, it was mm -hmm. literally right after that. So that got sidebarred and then the Manhattan Project got into play. I was going to say, I... I, I don't, I don't, I don't remember that in my history class. I, I, would have, <laughs> I don't remember most of this stuff in my yeah, history yeah, class. I don't, I don't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Discovery I, uh, Channel, for teaching me that. <laughs> Good you know, lord! I put a put a put a turret on on Appa, our cat. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and we go from there. Or that Claymore with the knife. <laughs> but or not Claymore, the uh, not Roomba. <laughs> the now that we're here, these um, we're 41 million already. Without the without the I'm already the, the, exhausted. The, I'm already. Like I'm done. Yeah. I, I, I and, and I was you know forty one million. You're like okay. I mean, and, and then it, the video cuts to like okay, well, let's talk about this side. Let's, let's talk about this side of the war. And it's like, dude, this is happening on like the the scale, the scale. Forty one million, with, and, and that, without even adding these guys. And he said it a couple times. This number is like this it's, is the, it's being debated. This is what yeah, yeah. I just gotta say like. World War II, it really changed our world. And you add it all was the outside a of Europe, huge, huge. It brings us to a grand total of 70 million for the war. Wow. Give or take, depending on who's counting and what civilian right. deaths get included. Hmm. This is... More people died in World War II than in any other war in history. For comparison, here are 20 or so of the very worst wars and atrocities we have on record. Some yeah, of these are more of atrocities than wars but we've seen how that distinction can get blurry. Some of these spanned across centuries. World War II had the highest body count, and it all happened in just six years. The world's population has grown significantly since the earliest atrocities on this list. If you want to compare them in terms of what percentage of the world died, we can adjust the chart to look like this. Wow, that's This rough approximation tells us there may have been more devastating wars before World War II, proportionally speaking. 
Yeah. But still. Um. When we turn to post-war conflicts, it's hard to say anything that isn't controversial. But the data shows something quite extraordinary has been happening. More peace now, right? I mean, it's... In 1989, yeah. John Gaddis coined the phrase, the long peace, to identify the absence of conflict between the nuclear powers during the Cold War. 25 years later, the Cold War is over, and the term is still being used, although its meaning may have shifted. European countries have not fought each other, except for this 10-day war in 1956 when the Soviet Union invaded Hungary. Until recently, now this year. European wars before World War II, it looks like this. They tend to be more frequent as you go back, though smaller oh, yeah. in scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the largest 44 economies of the world have not battled each other since World War II. Rich countries have fought poorer countries, like the US versus Iraq. But rich countries have not fought other rich countries, such a period of peace between the so-called great powers hasn't been seen since the Roman Empire. To many, peace is too strong of a word. Wars have occurred since World War II, and they can be grouped into these four categories. We don't see colonial wars anymore. We've already noted that interstate wars between rich countries have not occurred at all, and here we see wars involving smaller economies have tapered off. That leaves civil wars of two types, with and without foreign intervention. And this is what these battle deaths look like alongside of World War II. More people died fighting in World War II than in all the wars since. And again, we can't forget about world population, which has almost tripled since World War II. If we scale these numbers to show deaths in proportion to world population, showing the likelihood that a person on Earth dies in battle, the downward trend becomes even more pronounced. Now, this isn't to infer anything about why this trend is occurring. That's a discussion for another day. Yeah, you can now interact with this chart to explore what you could definitely have focus. different now bear in mind views on why that happened, why this, no, why why it is the way it is now. Yeah, you can have a lot of Peace debate based on it. Is a difficult mm -hmm. thing to measure. It's a bit like counting the people who didn't die in wars that never happened. We give such importance to the word peace, but we don't tend to notice it when it occurs or report on it. Sometimes it takes reminding ourselves of how terrible war once was to see the peace that has been growing around us. Of course, this trend may not continue, and it's not clear how looking at these charts can help us make the right decisions to ensure that it does. But the longer the long peace grows, the more significant it becomes. So if watching the news doesn't make us feel hopeful about where things are heading, watching the numbers might. Well, I think, to be honest, that we're, we're lucky to be living the time we're living today, as opposed to what other people have gone through. This is well done, by the way. Wow. Uh, a shout out to this channel uh, and this director, Neil Holleran. Uh, the Fall of World War II, the channel is called, what's the channel called? Oh, Neil Holleran. Uh, guys, subscribe to the channel. I'll make sure that the link is in the description. Uh, wow, was that sobering. Wow. Yes. That was super sobering about what we just saw there. I mean, like, I knew there was a lot of deaths. You know, I, I knew the Russians had paid a lot. Uh, again, the, the Pacific was the Japanese and China. I knew there was a lot. But to put it in perspective, to just put it in perspective what we were looking at, that was mind-blowing, what we just saw. That was absolutely mind-blowing. What, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, I'm going to be fully honest with our, our viewers. I just got here. Um, I, this is a horrible way to start my day. I, uh, <laughs> I had a corn dog and, and a Red Bull. And, and then this is the first things my eyes get to see as far as a, as a video today. And um, um, I, I feel tired. Um, I feel drained. Um, once again, yeah. we, we it's a thing for our channel, guys. I hope you guys don't feel what we have to feel. But... Um, we always talk like during uh, Band of Brothers, like, you know, these, are, these are a lot of guys. Like, this is, you know, we're, this is a lot of people. And then you look at the numbers and you're like, oh, we're speaking of millions of people, not a couple hundred thousand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe what we saw with Band of Brothers, like two or three of those, those dots there, yeah. as opposed to the overall picture, 
70 what was million, going on. 70 million people, bro. For me, like, seeing the little, the little peoples and whatnot, I did, like, kind of um, disassociate with it for a moment. But then, I would, as I would see, like, it going up and up and up. I would, I would have to remind myself that's not just yeah, one person. That, that's that a one, thousand, a thousand people, and it would just kind of wake me back up. Like, oh my god! How do you? That, how do you? That's why when the war was over, the 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 victory, the 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 the, the parties, the, the celebrations, parties, yeah. like this is over. This is this nightmare is fi- is finally over. The average age was twenty three. That also years. blew my mind. Twenty three years old was the average old, of death. Yeah, the people dying. Yeah, that's crazy, crazy, crazy. Twenty three and uh, yeah. Well, anyway, guys, this was very sobering for us here at our nights. Um, this was suggested by I can't remember who. Said, somebody mentioned this that we should check this An out. An evil, evil person. No. <laughs> Just kidding. This was absolutely sobering uh, and very important. Uh, Thank this, you for the suggestion. This, I like that this puts in perspective what we're watching. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, it, it's not just, you know, this particular battle, that particular mm-hmm. battle. It's your war picture what World War II yeah. was. You know, why the, the, that that those soldiers fighting were, are known as the greatest generation that ever lived because of what they stopped. You know, because mm-hmm. this would have probably continued on for a lot longer. Mm-hmm. Because Hitler didn't want to stop. Japan didn't want to stop. Like, Japan, they leave it up to them. They would have kept on to the Americas. You know, Hitler would have gone yeah. the other end. They, they would have, they wanted everything. They wanted everything, you know. So the numbers could have gone worse than what we're seeing here. Absolutely. It could have been a lot worse, you know. So those uh, those brave men and women from all countries who fought this tyranny, this fascism, you know, uh, they've changed it. They, ch- they, they changed the world that we live in today. And, and I know I always kind of joke around, like, I didn't want to watch it or I feel, but I do, <clears throat> I am grateful uh, for, for the men, the women who fought in, in these wars and who, you know, sacrifice their lives so that we can, you know, be but, here today. And, and the least we can do is see know it, about learn it, about, know about it. it. You yeah, know that's where I was going. I, the, the, the last thing, the least we can do is 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 know about it. I like you know? also that this video didn't tell us about any like actual heroic moments or anything. It kept its it no. kept its um what's the like the melancholy the 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 just kind of like that sad the tone. tone so that way it keeps you in the moment thinking like listen even though there was these heroic <laughs> moments on both sides and there were these people that we should look up to it was still a horrific event in our yeah. history that would pro- that has forever changed the world that we have right now we, we were looking at this through the eyes of, through the lens of being human of mm-hmm. human life you know and the, the toll on human life as it went on you know that's that's yeah. what makes us different you know um well, anyway guys uh this we are knights uh, this was the fall of World War II. I'm Ray. I'm Alex. I'm Julian. Guys, thank you very much. If you like what we're doing, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button. Please leave a comment You know, if, if you would like to share any thoughts. We appreciate you guys. Guys, take care. Peace.